Did you know Shape Master can do this? Hi folks, Melvin here from OptoProductions.com and in this video I'll show you how to use Shapemaster Pro as a wavetable oscillator. And it's actually quite simple. All we need to do is take the CV output and connect that to our audio interface. Shapemaster starts looping by default. Let me connect the scope for a second. As you can see, we've got a triangle wave here. But we don't hear anything yet and that's because the rate is currently set to 1 second or 1 hertz. So let's shorten the length a bit. And there it is. We get a sound. So even though we don't have an actual audio output, everything in Eurorack land is voltage. Our speakers don't care how that voltage looks like, as long as it's an alternating current and not a DC signal. The only thing I do want to change is the range. It's set to unipolar right now, but I want to change that to bipolar, plus or minus 5 volt. Right, so by shortening the length, we can increase the pitch. But I'm not sure what pitch this is exactly, so to convert this uh, time value into a frequency, we need to divide 1 by the time in seconds. So let's say we want to output a central C with a frequency of 261.63 Hz. So let me grab a calculator. So 1 divided by 261, uh, we use uh, commas here in Europe, so 63 Hz, and that's 0 0.00382 seconds. So if we enter this, now this should be a central C. If we compare that with a default VCO, for example, yeah, that sounds about right. It's spot on actually. With Shapemaster we don't actually need to do this calculation because we can add frequencies in Hertz by adding uh, the frequency and adding Hertz behind it, so HZ. And you can even change the display, so if you right click on the number box you can change the mode to frequency. So that's a bit easier, but now that's working. What if we want to change the pitch with a sequencer for example? Well this is where you run into the limitation of Shapemaster 3 because we need to modulate the length parameter. And we've got no CV input for that. But with the Pro version, we've got four expanders, and one of those is the SMCV expander. So if we put that on the left, we've now got access to 24 different poly CV inputs. So one voice for each of the eight channels. And here, we've not only got a length, but we've also got a volt per octave input. And now we can truly turn this into a wavetable oscillator with unlimited wave shapes. Let me just add a quantizer for a second. Let's take a minor scale. But yeah, now we can draw in any curve we want. play around with the warp parameter. Or the slew rate. Smooth. Even a swing. Which is pretty cool actually. Okay, so let's uh, modulate some stuff. Let's say we want to add some frequency modulation. So if I grab an LFO, uh, or let me grab a VCO, and uh, we could send this to the length input. But then it's a bit difficult to tune. We can also send it to the phase input. Because if I move the phase control, we don't hear any change, because regular human beings, like you and me, can't perceive static phase. But if I move this control really quickly, now you do hear the difference. So if we modulate this control, and we 
can turn up the rate. Now we get something that's not dissimilar to FM synthesis. But FM, or in this case phase modulation, sounds best with integer ratios. So let me grab an octave for module. And let's also add a VCA, so we can control the depth or the modulation amount. I'll take the quantizer output and send that to the octave for input. And send the output to the volt per octave input. Change the pitch to central C. And let's take the sign output and send that through the VCA back to the phase input. Oh, I accidentally removed the pitch. Uh, but let me switch to a sign for a second, because FM usually works better with simple waveforms. So let's select a sign preset. Oh, and let me reset the phase to zero. Oh, made a patching mistake. I need to take the output from the quantizer, of course. Yeah, there it is. A very stable phase modulation. So now we can change the ratio. But of course this octaver works in doubles. So this becomes a ratio of 2 to 1, 4 to 1, 8 to 1, and so on. So we can't really achieve ratios of 3 to 1, but it should give you plenty of options to play around with. Only thing we do need to keep in mind is that the CV outputs from Shapemaster don't have anti-aliasing applied. So this means that when you generate a lot of high frequencies that approach the Nyquist frequency, so half the sample rate, you may generate reflected frequencies. So this can result in some more harsh and metallic frequencies. But most of the time, this isn't that big of a deal. Alright, cool. Now instead of modulating the phase, we can also patch our oscillator to the trigger input, like I've got right here. I'm using a square wave output right here. And now if you change the trigger mode from auto to gate control, we can re-trigger the oscillator. So this basically turns this input into a sync input. play around with the pulse width. We can also add a loop point by clicking on this button. If you click once, you can enter a sustain point. If you click twice, we get two gray lines. One for the loop start and one for the loop end point. And of course we can modulate this. I've already got a modulation going on right here. So CV2 from the sequencer is sending to the loop end and sustain input. But instead of a sequencer we can also add a LFO. Now you can see the loop point moving. You may want to add a VCA behind it to control the depth. And we're still only using a sine wave. So let's say we use a more complex shape. Well, that's pretty cool already. Now let's say I want to add another channel. I can just copy the settings of this channel. Let me just switch it to a ramp. And let's reverse it. So I can just copy by right clicking on the channel number. Go to copy and right click on channel number 2. Paste. 
Now I sent the CV output of channel 2 to uh, the mixer and uh, let me double the length. So increasing the length will lower the pitch. And if you didn't know this, you can actually enter in simple calculations like add, subtract, divide and multiply. So if I type an asterisk times 2, we lower the pitch by an octave. But right now we still don't hear anything. So let's say I want to duplicate the output of this sequencer and send that to channel 2 as well. How do we do this? Well, since these CV inputs are polyphonic, I need to merge the sequence and combine it into a polyphonic signal. Shapemaster Pro comes with an uh, extension module called U-Melt or Micro-Melt. And this does exactly what we need, but you can also use VCV's own poly-merge uh, module. If we take the output from the sequencer and send that to channel 1 and channel 2, we take the merge output, as you can see channel 1 and 2 are lit right now, send that to the volt per octave input. Oh, I just need to copy the, the gate output as well. So now we've got two channels. And depending on the shape you choose, you can really dive into bleeps and bloops territory. So one final tip I want to give you before we wrap up this video is that it's also very cool to modulate the warp parameter. So let's do that. Let's take uh, CV number 2 from our sequencer and send that to the warp input. If we send it directly it will only modulate channel 1. But if I want to send it to channel 2 for example and just need to copy the micro melt Send that to channel 2, connect that over here. Or you can of course just use an LFO instead. Right, cool. Well, that's it for this video. We're still barely scratching the surface with this module, but I hope this gives you some new ideas to experiment on your own. Let me know if you have any questions down below or drop me an email to melvin at optoproductions.com and I'll see you all next week with another tutorial.